I'm Dr. David Ajibade with the Brain and Body Foundation and welcome to your health in your hands and I'm particularly excited about our topic today and our guest today. If you remember, a lot of the things we talk about, the whole idea behind uh, these presentations, these talks, is we want to educate you, the average Nigerian, on the things that pertain to your health, how to take control of it, how to take charge of it. And there are four main areas we look at. One is how your body works. Two is how to keep your body working properly, even onto your old age. And three is how to avoid toxins. But number four, you can do everything, of, you can do all of these perfectly if you don't, or if you neglect the other part, which is the part the medical professionals have to play in your life, and of course, the, the government, what the government has to do. You may fail health-wise because they have their part to play, and of course, you have your part to play. Today, we're going to be talking about NAFDAC, NAFDAC and your health. And I have with me no, lo no other than the DG, the head of NAFDAC, Professor Mojisola Adieye. Good afternoon, Ma. Thank well, you. It's nice to be here. Uh, we are Thank so you. honored, so honored to make the, that you are able to make the time, and okay. I know that you have to rush off after this presentation. Yes. So, um, we're going to read out a couple of the things that you've done in the past, uh, and I have to say it is remarkable. You, know, you are a founding chairman of the BAM, BAM Pharmaceutical Sciences and a professor of pharmaceutics, manufacturing, a long list over at Illinois, the USA. You are also a professor of pharmace pharmaceutics and manufacturing for 21 years at another university, and it goes on and on. You are a fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Science and the Nigeria Academy of Pharmacy. So I'm looking at all these things, yeah, and I'm like, something that is conspicuously absent is there any prior government administrative work. It's been a science and science background from beginning to end. And now you're the DG of a highly public position in the ministry. How has it been? You know, it's very interesting that sometimes we go through times in life and we don't know how it's going to connect. Hmm. Uh, because when I started my tenure as a, an assistant professor uh, about 30 years ago, I, got, I was in a university that got bankrupt before I came. Mm -hmm. And the equivalent of the VC uh, to that university was also joining the university at that time. The university was so bankrupt that professors have to go and beg on the street to ask for donations. Wow. And this new VC said, look, I think observed you know, from the documents and whatnot that what the university needs is change of mind uh, and introduce the quality management system. This is the VC? The VC. Okay. And what he told us is that he wants our brains washed from the way we used to do things. Mm -hmm. or, you know, I just joined, but the way all of us do, do things. Mm -hmm. And that by the time he leaves the university, it will take a rocket science to bankrupt it. <laughs> you know, wow. uh, I was going through this, of course, as a new uh, hire mm -hmm. uh, with others. We went through maybe for one and a half years. Of, the, of brain washing, a brain washing, mm -hmm. or washing the brain, <laughs> or washing <laughs> you know? the brain. Uh, about maybe every other week, seminars. Everybody gather in the student union building. Mm. That you have to think of the end user mm. for university is the student. How is my attitude to work affecting mm. the student? Mm. How is my attitude to work affecting learning? Mm. So I brought the same thing to NAVDAC, not knowing that 30 years later I was going to use it. Wow. You see, if we don't know who we are serving, then we will not care. Right. And I remember my speech in Lagos, I said, I'm going to introduce quality management system. Quality management system focuses on the end user. Mm -hmm. In this case, the man on the street, right? The patient, right? But it is a mind turning, brainwashing 
in terms of attitude to work. And uh, we started, of course, we got some support because it cost money to do the training. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a company-wide training. Oh, yes. Um, it's agency-wide. Agency -wide. Excuse me. Agency-wide training. Yes. We are, are 2,300 staff. Hmm. So we started with the quality managers that were trained to be quality managers before I came. Hmm. They wanted to do it piecemeal before, meaning registration, we do this, lab, we do this. But when I came, I said, it is agency-wide training that we need hmm. because I knew what happened. In the, at, the, at the university where I spent 21 years. Right. So the quality managers and the directors will start the training. Then they will cascade it down in Lagos and Abuja to other staff. Mm -hmm. And then the quality managers went to these zones, the six uh, geopolitical zones, right. uh, where the state coordinators and the zonal directors will come together to be trained, mm -hmm. and then the state coordinators will take it to the states. Wow. So it was cascading. Wow. So we changed, you know, we added to our motto, customer-focused, agency-minded. Interesting. Interesting. What am I doing to affect the person on the street negatively in NAVDAC? That's what I was posing to all of us, or what we were being trained to think about. Things have changed. Hmm. Uh, you mentioned that I don't have administrative. <laughs> I have three children <laughs> and married for about 40 something years. Managed my uh, family finances. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was also brought up to cut your coat according to your cloth, hmm. not according to your size. According to what you have. Uh, according to what you have. My grandmother, once we f f you know, get out of school, you see that I go to the farm hmm. to meet my other uh, siblings or my dad and my mom uh, or go to my grandmother's house to sell. Mm -hmm. Sold kerosene, sold salt, sold pepper. Right from the beginning, I was taught to know the value of money. Hmm. Hmm. And we weren't that rich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I knew that money that I don't have, I don't spend. So it's uh, it's just uh, you know what I inherited and you know my own background helped me a lot. So this is interesting. This is these are things that were inculcated to you knowingly or un unknowingly. It seems, seems almost like you were prepared for the last <laughs> fifty plus years for a yes. job such as this, and that is fascinating. And I, and I was watching one of your interviews and one of your presentations in which you were able to turn around a huge deficit in the agency within a couple of a year or so. Yeah. Uh, how much are we talking about? <coughs> uh, we, we, we might have to jump to the next segment, but we'll just give us a quick idea. It's like, of, it's, I meant a 3.2 billion naira debt. 3.2 billion naira. Exactly. And uh, I found you know, what is the source or uh, why were we in debt. Uh, and then, you know, we turned it around. We paid 3.01 by the end of November, which is uh, almost a year. Uh, we paid it out. You know. <laughs> yeah. that, that is amazing. Anyway, I hope we can, we can talk a little bit more about that, but we have to take a short break now, and then don't go away, folks. We will be right back. Welcome back. I'm here with Professor Adeyeye, the DG, Director General of the NAFDAC, National Administration National agency, agency for, for food, food and drug, drug administration, administration and, and control. control. I, yes. I, always, I, I thought I knew that part it of it. It's, it's kind of a long one. Yes. But it kind of, kind of summarizes and says exactly what you do. Most people just think, uh, NAVDAG, fake drugs, fake drugs, fake drugs, fake drugs. No, that's all they do. Can you just give us like a synopsis? Uh, I, I, and I know your scope is expanded, it's expansive, both here and outside the country. Just Help us have an idea for the average citizen, the average man on the streets. Let them know what exactly NAFTAC is. Because, and the reason I'm saying this is people on the streets need to know where to run to and what, who to talk to if there are issues that they feel needs to be brought up. NAFTAC's uh, mandate 
is to control uh, the manufacturing, the distribution, uh, the sale, the use of drugs, uh, food, beverages, chemicals, mm. detergents, medical devices. We have seven wow. regulated products. Detergents too? Yes. Okay. Uh, in order to safeguard the health of our country, of our people. Mm -hmm. And so we are very, we are kind of multi hydra headed type of organization. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, our main uh, regulated products are drugs and food. Mm -hmm. We want to be sure that the food that we eat are also. So that is part of what we control mm -hmm. on a daily basis. For example, take bread. Mm -hmm. If there's bromate in bread, it can cause damage. It can cause liver damage. Mm. That's, so a, that's a chemical. That's, that's a chemical. Do they, do they typically put it in bread, though? It used to be in bread, but they uh, banned it. Good. But there's few. There's still few people that use bromate in bread. And that can cause liver damage. You yes. Said. It mm. can cause a lot of health problems. Mm. So we have to make sure that you know the bread on the streets. We sample them. Right now, we are doing a study in. Uh, Abuja, we are doing one in Lagos, mm -hmm. just random sampling of bread in the market mm -hmm. and testing it for bromate. Uh, that is just typical food. Mm -hmm. we, be, we are big in laboratory, we cannot do anything without testing. Right. So we have to have sophisticated equipment. So we have the laboratory services directorate. When we suspect that a drug is being faked, uh, or a manufacturing site is not registered, we have enforcement. And our enforcement is made up of lawyers and police. Mm. And regulators, of course, pharmacists and, you know. Right. Uh, so we go after such people and we take our cases to court. Okay. So we have to prosecute mm -hmm. in some cases. Uh, we have the drug evaluation uh, department, uh, directorate, mm -hmm. where we do inspection. And sometimes we do sting inspection on the spot without the any spot, without any, any um, warnings no. exactly mm -hmm. uh, when we had the coding issue we did sting mm -hmm. undercover uh, monitoring and you know inspection and uh, that led to closure of uh, the three companies um, of course for a week but that sends a signal uh, we have, mm -hmm. of course, registration, you know, we just try to register your product and mm -hmm. whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, we have narcotics uh, for those who want to, you know, make codeine, of course, you know, uh, even tramadol, uh, that is a problem now. Mm -hmm. the 50 milligram, 100 milligrams are medically prescribed. That is allowable. It is when people now start using 200 milligrams that can destroy the brain and whatnot. That's where the problem is. Uh, we have pharmacovigilance. Pharmacovigilance and post-marketing surveillance, huge. Really? Yes. Because NAVDAC is the center for pharmacovigilance in Nigeria. Okay. And part of what I'm doing right now is expanding pharmacovigilance. Because we're supposed to be the poison cell control center. So if somebody swallows something, we, they, they can call and say, oh, I swallow this. And then, you know, the pharmacist will say, use this so that, you know, antidote or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, well, we need to get that number. Maybe we will we'll have them post it on the, on the screen. Yes, uh, yeah. I will ask uh, one of my, because I don't have it in my head. I understand. But it's on our website. Okay. It's on our website. Okay. Uh, we have adverse events. Okay. Uh, it's, it's all, it houses the adverse events uh, center. Uh, in fact, NAVDAC is in the center and the six teaching hospitals okay. feed into that. Okay. I'm going to make that better. Okay. Because we need to make sure that any adverse event that is occurring in any health institution mm -hmm. can be reported. It's reported. Exactly. Very important. So you can monitor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Post marketing surveillance. You bring medicine to the country, mm -hmm. we have to follow it up mm -hmm. to make sure that what you use in your formulation when you register is what you are using two, three years after. And people change mm -hmm. formulation of orders. Course. Of course. So we have to do post marketing surveillance for both drugs and food. Is it on the spots that you, you take your lab to those areas or you have, have them send them to you, send you the sample? Most of the times we have to take the samples uh, okay. back to the lab. Okay. But we have also detection for drugs especially. We mm -hmm. have on the spots. 
checking okay and uh, that we are going to even scale up okay. now because you know we have to use now new softwares and technologies you know to make that like seems like a, a lot of work that you're putting into this thing and we have to we have to because the health of our people depends on it it and seems, that, that seems like a lot of things were just letting well was, was just sliding things were sliding unfortunately uh before i came okay. and but that's in the past now okay yeah we have this quality management system has turned that's, 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 that's amazing that you were able to do all that too and and one of the things that we want to talk about especially in the next segment is the challenges that you you, you faced in really putting this quality control in in, in position because mm -hmm. i i i mean well, i i'm mean, Nigerian mindsets. Tomorrow we don't like change. Nobody likes change. <laughs> but I think Nigerians especially <laughs> do, not, do not like change. So let's uh, let's talk about that a little okay. bit more in the next in the next segment. Okay. All right, folks. We will be right back. Do not change the channel. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. We are continuing our discussion on NAFDAQ and your health. Uh, we have the DG, Professor Mojisola Adiyeye, with us talking about ah, NAFDAQ. What a big term. What a big... Uh, uh, we, 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 <laughs> we, we don't, don't have enough time, but we are going to go into... Hopefully, we're going to have you come back over and over and over again. Thank you. Um, okay. You're yeah, here putting quality control in place. You're yeah, here training the, the the people, ensuring that everybody does what is right. That can't be easy within our environment. No, it's not at all. Uh, it's not, and it, or it wasn't. I have fantastic uh, staff, mm -hmm. uh, directors. You know, the world has changed tremendously uh, because of uh, technology software technology internet things like that and one of the challenges that i met when i came was the lack of use of technology mm. the communication technology was not given the attention that it needed uh it, we couldn't even communicate with ourselves within navdac mm. through email no effectively no we couldn't effectively many people were not on the platform uh people were using their pop mail and which was not supposed to be uh, right. in a regulatory system mm -hmm. so what i started doing was to st start with email system the basic of basic. the basic of basic so that we once we can communicate with them within ourselves or within the agency then we can communicate with outside mm -hmm. So that was part of it. Uh, another technological tool that I introduced was video conferencing. Uh, I can have a meeting with Australia now. Once I have my cell phone or whatever, you know, and the number to dial, mm -hmm. and I will be seeing everybody there. So long as they are not more than like 35 <laughs> people. Okay. So I introduced video, uh, video conferencing mm -hmm. rather. Uh, so that travel from Lagos and Abuja could be reduced right. and the cost reduced. That was part of how we were recovering the debt. I see. Uh, I see. Then we, I believe in documentation, which is also part of quality management system, mm -hmm. because some of our staff will resign or retire rather, and they probably you know, were using their own personal computers out and they go with documentation with all the documents, with all the documents. Uh, some of them says they moved out exactly mm -hmm. so now we have you know uh, an intranet documentation system okay well which That's means cool. if uh, somebody loses something you know even lose their own laptop you can sign on to our website okay. with a password uh, the structuring of the IT was a big thing for me uh, because as we speak people may be looking at NAFDAQ in Malaysia and clicking clicking what do they do here what do they do there what mm -hmm. do they do mm -hmm. uh, so that is one of the challenges that I took to as that. an opportunity uh, the lab was another challenge uh, you see you cannot do anything without equipment 
At all. And with ISO, International Standard Organization Controls and so on, the equipment you used five, six, seven years ago may be obsolete now. In terms of data integrity, that you have to have password access to get into your data so that nobody can break into it, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the equipment were updates of obs obsolete some of them were obsolete some were not needed updated mm -hmm. and that was the challenge that i had because without equipment we will not get good results uh, so we started of course through our cost cutting measures we thought we were able to buy so they buy a little bit at a time okay and supplies you cannot do anything without standards right because you have to compare what you are doing with this standard, reference standard. So we started doing all those. And then uh, lately the government also, just like this, had me talk about we don't have equipment and the government responded. And they, yes, and you know, they set some money aside to, for us to buy equipment and then we got you know, some help also from CBN. Uh, it's a process that was started before I came, but I made it, you know, to happen. Good. Uh, so that is a challenge, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which we are overcoming beautifully. I mentioned the attitude to work challenge, which is kind of cultural in a way. Uh, and uh, the quality management system has changed that. We have not arrived, mm -hmm. by all means. I'm no, sure, because sure. it's a culture. Right. Uh, but with we are years, light years <laughs> apart uh, from where we were before. Uh, so things are going very well. And that's yeah. phenomenal. That's phenomenal. So these are challenges that you saw within the establishment themselves. Now, I just mentioned the government too was very cooperative as well as CBN, and that's, yes. that's, that's huge. There were there any other outside forces that were trying to... Um, well, frustrate your efforts. Actually, uh, yes. Uh, I when it was all on the news, uh, I w I'm not used to, you know, bribing people or receiving bribes, and I was approached by the committee on healthcare services, who happened to be doing oversight, uh, to give money, and I said I don't have money. That. The lab NAVDAC was bleeding, hmm. bleeding because of lack of this, lack of that. Hmm. So that, I believe, caused some problem which people saw. Hmm. <laughs> on yeah, the air. It kind of made you famous a little bit, right? Uh, I don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> but, you know, it is all about building a nation is not just one person. Yes. It's not just the National Assembly, it's not just NAVDAC, it's the person on the street. Right. Let me give you an example. When we were procuring equipment, mm -hmm. because I know about all the equipment that we were, we were procuring, I was using them in, mm -hmm. in the U.S. And I told the, one of the equipment manufacturers, I said, do not give us too much, uh, too high a cost. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be building this nation together. Make 25% profit, don't make 70%. 70 yes. Please, we are building a nation together. So, it is, uh, so you have the goodwill of the manufacturers abroad because you have been already been working yes, in that environment, that's right. which is fantastic. So, I mean, uh, so th there's, a pl there's, a pl there's a place for the experience abroad and the connections to bring that back here. And I think a lot of other, uh, shall we say, returnees <laughs> and, and doing, diasporas, uh, and diasporas yeah. are, are trying to do that. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe in the next segment too, in the next sessions, we'll be talking about how to even bring more of those people who want to, who want to do something in Nigeria, yes. but for some reason I've been frustrated yes. from doing it. So we'll talk about that. Okay. But at this point, Ma, I'm sorry, we have to take a break here Thank you. for until next week. Yes. <laughs> but we Thank will continue so to discuss about this. Thank, Thank you. you so, so much. It's so nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. We really appreciate it. Thank you. See you folks next week. Okay. Cheers.